Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. I had been itching to make an 1890s walking suit for a while. I actually made a half scale model a couple of years ago and wanted to revisit the style. Here are my main inspirations, a few excellent garments, mostly from 1895 to 1899. I wanted a long skirt, short jacket and vest combo. In terms of materials, I bought a lightweight black wool suiting a year or so ago. It was on offer for a discounted price of £5 per metre. It was sold as 100% wool, but I now think it is a blend. I also purchased horsehair canvas and I had some lightweight black silk for lining. I actually had two different kinds of canvas in my stock. Both of them have horsehair in them, but one of them is mostly cotton. I tried out some tailoring techniques in my half scale model, but that had been so fleeting and so long ago that I really wanted to do my research. Here are some of my references. I used the Keystone Guide to Jacket and Dress Cutter to draft my pattern. I actually just used their instructions for a waist and then adapted it into a simple jacket, although they have some specific jacket styles in the book. I had to do three mock-ups and quite a few rounds of alterations until I was happy enough to proceed. My first step was to trace out the pattern shapes onto the stripes. I did this individually for every piece, cutting one layer of fabric at a time to try and mirror the stripes. I traced this in chalk and then added a 1 inch seam allowance. This would allow me to make pretty drastic fitting changes should I need to. I didn't. To mirror the stripes, I pinned the cut piece to the fabric, matching all the stripes and cut out the second piece. I then also thread traced all of the pieces on the chalk line. This will help me match up everything neatly further on, especially with the large seam allowances. Now I read and reread all the instructions, and I even diligently made notes. However, straight off from the bat, I decided to deviate. In the instructions, the horsehair is added in precise places to strengthen and give structure. However, I wasn't confident in the weight of my wool, so I added a layer of the mostly cotton canvas to all of the pattern pieces, as an interlining. I then cut particular sections out of the horsehair canvas, the front, sloping from the dart to the underarm, a section that spanned under the arm, the lapels and a small section to cover the back neckline. I then had all my pieces, except for facings and the lining. The first step was to sew up the darts. 
there is one dart on the centre front panel. However, this meant that for one front piece there were four darts, one in the wool, one in the cotton covers and two in the horsehair layers. For the wool, I simply pinned and basted the darts together, then sewing by machine. For the cotton canvas and the horsehair layers, the darts are actually cut out from the pieces. The edges are butted up together and then sewn together. I used a herringbone stitch for this. This was actually really pleasing to do. From what I understand, tailoring equals basting everything and then basting again. I proceeded to baste every layer of canvas to the corresponding wool pieces. I pressed all of my dots well before basting the front pieces. I then basted the layer of horsehair canvas to the front piece. This one slopes from the dart to the underarm, it is only 3 inches deep at the underarm. I did all of my basting with a thin needle and cotton thread. I was also working really hard on getting over my bad habit of knotting my basting thread. This makes it harder to remove in The last layer to go on the front piece is an oval E shape of horsehair canvas, position at the top of the dart and to pad in the hollow of the chest, creating a smooth shape. The darts were all lined up and I then sewed one quarter inch strip of cotton tape over the darts, covering the harsh edge. The horsehair edge is actually really prickly, so it's good to cover the raw edges. I pinned it in place and then felled each side with cotton thread as well. I used the same method to cover the raw edge all around the pad section. It was then time to move on to pad stitching. In coat making, a stitch known as padding stitch is used on the lapels and collar because the canvas and cloth must be held firmly together. This is affected by many small stitches, which may be about half an inch long on the canvas side and just barely catch, but not show through on the right side of the cloth. According to authentic Victorian techniques, this is also applied to the horsehair pad. Pad stitching is my new favourite thing, although I would not recommend watching a good film while doing it. My stitches went pretty wonky while rewatching the Pirates of the Caribbean. Before assembly, I decided my back piece needed to be recut, as it wasn't interesting enough. I don't know why I didn't do this from the start. <laughs> I recut them so that the stripes would chevron at the centre back.
I then carefully basted the two pieces together, doing my best to match the stripes. I basted and sewed it together by machine. Here is the boring stripe back piece, compared to diagonal stripes. So it's time to unpick the cotton canvas from the dud back piece and then baste it onto the new back piece. Once that was fixed, I pinned and basted the sad back pieces to the back pieces and sewed it by machine. I also joined the front pieces to the side pieces in the same manner. I then joined the back side pieces to the side pieces, very, very carefully. When pinning all the pieces, I always made sure that the thread tracing on all the pieces matched up. The last seam to be sewn was the shoulder seam. At this point, the main jacket was together and I moved on to working on the lapels. I go over how I did them like this a bit further on, but I basted a layer of the cotton canvas to a layer of wool. This is actually the under lapel, as the outer lapel is going to be a layer of black velvet. I don't have any footage of cutting this out as I was trying to work out of my stash and actually cut this out of a friend's old jersey velvet skater dress. I added a layer of horsehair over the cotton canvas. And then I pad stitched the whole thing.
I know this video hasn't really been a vlog, um, but I thought it might be worth going over really quickly in case I forget when editing um, why I've done this the way I have. So this isn't the proper way to make a jacket, as I've learned. Um, usually you draft the lapel into the main jacket piece and then that's folded back, pad stitched, and then sewn to a facing and then like top stitched around and pressed into place. I have not done this because I could not for the life of me figure out how that would connect to the collar, which is done with me because I've actually done this before in the jacket I make, made for Milo. Um, but I could not, I, <laughs> I read a bunch of books and they all just kept confusing me. I think I finally figured it out in my head. I don't know why my brain was having such a hard time with that particular thing, which made me do things this way. I think this might work anyway, it's just not the proper way to do a jacket and I wanted to make that very clear because I don't know anything about tailoring. So instead what I'm doing, what I did was I drafted the lapel in collar. It's not really a collar, it's more like a design feature. I didn't really want it a standing collar. Um, so this is just like a design feature. So that's, that's why I thought it'd be okay like this because at the moment it won't have an under collar. Um, so what I did was I drafted it separately and I built it separately. So there's, um, this is out of the wall as well and it's the underside, which also has one layer of canvas and then one layer of horsehair. Um, and that's been pat stitched as well. And then it's gonna be sewn to the, um, to the actual front piece um, over this edge and then sewn along this edge to the coat. Obviously they're not perfect or anything, but I had a lot of fun and I really enjoyed doing it. I stepped away from the lapel for a moment to add the last horsehair bits to the jacket. There is a 3 inch wide section under the arm, spanning over two pattern pieces and one on the back neck. The book didn't mention finishing these raw edges and the jacket does get a full lining, but I still wish I had covered these edges with cotton tape. These were just hand sewn in place to the canvas with a herringbone stitch. I cut out the lining from my lightweight silk. I made the lining of the front piece shorter and cut out a facing roughly half the front piece out of the wall. I started on the lining by sewing the darts and then all the pieces together. My machine hated this silk. Every thread and needle were too much for it, so the stitching on lining is actually quite ugly.
back to the lapels. I sewed the velvet pieces together at the centre back, and I did the same to the wool pieces, making them into one long piece. I then pinned and stitched the wool side to the velvet piece, right sides facing each other. This was sewn by machine, very slowly. I then trimmed the seams, turned it the right side out and pressed carefully. I then top stitched it by hand with a small prick stitch in a lovely mercerized cotton thread, only using two strands at a time. I then basted the two layers together at the side where they would be attached to the jacket. I made sure my canvas and horsehair layers were not over the thread tracing on the front piece. Some of my other pieces were an eighth of an inch over or so and got caught on the seams which made them lumpier to press, so I always trimmed them back as much as possible. I pinned the lapel in place, basted and sewed. I trimmed back the seam allowance with pinking shears and pressed it well. I put the jacket on the dress form and then pinned the front facing in place, turning the raw edge under and matching it up with the lapel seam. I then pinned the lining on. This was much easier on the dress form. I followed the raw edge of the lining at the front under and pinned it in place. The facing and the lining were whip stitched in place by hand. The main jacket construction is done, but there is still so much left to do. Stay tuned for sleeves, the skirt and the vest. Thank you for watching.